bring it up. I get the nickel. You don't want to get beat over the top. But when nobody no, Jason, you said at your point in your thing, it's like the why the the three plays across the top on Madden are all run up the middles. The three plays on the bottom are all run up the middles. They're not going to throw the ball, and you're still in nickel. <laughs> We're still playing prevent defense. Put, I mean, put in punt block, man. Just do it. <laughs> like you said on the day after. I mean, that 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 is why it's all a bunch of BS. I mean, I get, I get scheme. I get uh, the way you do things. I mean, Roy Williams did that same thing and won national championship in 17. That's the issue with me, Jason, is the lack of adaptability when you know what's coming. Yeah, the bigger problem for me is the indication of we play nickel, meaning we've not really <laughs> done any we've we've not really practiced anything else. Yeah. That's what that means. That's exactly right? that's what that, means. what that means is look, we don't have other packages to go to go to when teams go heavy. We we just really haven't we don't have that. That to me, look, if I'm if I'm NC State and I hear that, you know what I'm doing for the next couple of weeks? I'm figuring out how can I run three tight ends all game, and they'll do it. And just run down like that. We'll do it. Duke will do it. Yeah. Why? Because if I if I hear that and I'm like they're a nickel team and their answer to this is nickel. Even when they went big, they're just going nickel. Okay. Well, let's find out if they've even practiced other personnel. Well, that that reminds me very vividly of a conversation I had with a staff member after the Russell athletic bowl in 2015, when Baylor, they're still running for yards. I think, uh, I asked him, I was like, once they started making it clear, they were going to run the ball with a bunch of big guys. Could you not just change things up dramatically? <laughs> and his response was, what do you want us to do? Draw up plays in the dirt. Meaning well, they did not honestly, have any other, options. honestly, my my preference in certain cases, yeah. In I mean, in that case, my answer is Steve Spurrier did it. <laughs> Get Sometimes drawing. that is the only answer. If you're going to give up 700 yards one way or the other, you might as well do it drawing some plays up in the dirt. Yeah. And I know this is you know anathema to modern coaches for whom preparation is everything. But that's my thing. That's exactly my point here. Is if you are going to take that approach then that means you need to dedicate a certain amount of time every during camp and every week to some other packages. Now, you've got you've got a goal line package already. Why well, what I don't understand is okay, yeah, you're a nickel team. That's a goal line situation. It may be in the middle of the field, but that's goal line. Stick your goal line package out there and I've seen it. You've got it. But this is one where the uh the the thing that I want to see is Okay, if let's say NC State does come out and they're in 12 personnel or 22 personnel or, you know, 13 personnel, so three tight ends or two tight ends or two tight ends and a back, two tight ends and two backs. If they go heavy or if Duke does that, because Duke will do it, if you're going to match in nickel, you're going to get beat. Which means to me, you'd better have some other options. You'd better have some options where, let's say, Amari Gaynor is on the field at Sam. And now you're going bigger and you're going to, you're going to crowd the line of scrimmage with five guys on the, on the line of scrimmage and two backers, and you're going to force them to, to play against some bigger personnel. Or if you're not, if you don't think that's going to work, you go with a true five man defensive line, you stick another defensive tackle on there. You move one of your guys out. You, you, you've got to have some other personnel packages. And I understand they don't feel like they have a ton of personnel to do some of that stuff with. But that's what you have to have. You have to have some of that ready for those situations where it's like, look, th this is our only choice. Like there, there's there's certain situations where in that at the end of the game, the the situation is you go three corners, one one safety on the field, and you stick an extra backer out there to make sure that that you have a backer triggering downhill from that in the box position. And a lot of teams, a lot of people have wondered, like, why do they call the nickel the star? You know, what, what's the star and money and all these other things? The whole point of that terminology, you call the what used to be the nickel the star because that's really the Sam linebacker position. And you call the, the Will linebacker the money because it's really 
it's all about what that guy does in the in the call, not about the actual personnel. And you want to be able to play a defensive back there in certain situations, and you cross-train defensive backs there for 6DB situations. You want to be able to cross-train a corner at, at, at safety for certain situations. You want to be able to do some of that so that in these situations you're in position if this guy, or if they're if they're you know pushing it down our throat, if they're if they're pounding the pounding the ball, I want to be able to say okay, I'm taking my my nickel out of the star spot and I'm putting another guy in there who's really more of a an outside linebacker, or I'm taking that safety out and I'm putting a backer there and I'm walking him up and and now he's he's really just going to play the equivalent of a Sam on the other side. It's a rover. And you just play that rover and you're just going to play single high. And now you're in a different, you have to have some of that stuff in your system and you have to prepare it just in case you need it so that you don't end up having to draw in the dirt later. You do this in camp. And then when you get later in the season, if you get to this, you, you know, you, if you have to call time out and say, Hey guys, remember when we did this six weeks ago, <laughs> this is what we're doing. You're going to line up there and, you know, if you need anything, if you if you're not, if you're not sure, talk to said. Make sure make sure said tells you what your gap is. But you're going to do that. That's what you have to do. I mean, I, I'm 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 kind of old school in that respect. You've got to yeah. move your personnel around to be able to do this stuff. And who's the guy? Who's that number three? That's from Florida State. He he seemed like he might have been a good option there in that star. Like I I, I was that was where I was just sitting there going really. Well, we saw that in training camp where he was running at linebacker as a third backer at times. And again, that's why you do that. Yeah. So that in this situation, you can make that sub. 